Okay, section 9.2 is on the uh, line of regression, and uh, you can write an equation describing the relationship between x, the x and y variables. This equation is called your line of regression, or your least squares line, or your line of best fit. From algebra, we know that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Now, they may use uh, different values sometimes in statistics for the slope. Instead of m, sometimes they use b with a little sub-zero, and your y-intercept, they use b with a sub-1. But either way, the, the number before the x, when you have an equation in y equals something times x plus b, the number before the x is the slope, and the number at the end is the uh, y-intercept. So for the previous problem that we did with absences and grade, uh, we found the uh, a line of best fit. So let's go to the Excel sheet, and we'll see that line. Here's the data still in there for number of absences here, and here is uh, the grades. And what we found was here's the data points. The blue line, blue dots are the data points for each person. Like here's this person that uh, missed, let's see, didn't miss too many classes, only missed two classes and got a score of 92. Well, that's this person right here. And let's see, out here there's somebody that missed 15 classes and got a 43. So here's the number of classes missed, number of absences, 15, and they got a 43. So all those points have been plotted on Excel as soon as you put the data points in. And then it automatically gets this line of best fit. That's very difficult to do by hand, this line of best fit to calculate it. And um, when you, it gets this line of best fit, this line has a slope, and we can see it's negative because it goes downhill, and it gives you the slope right there, and also gives you a y-intercept of 105.67. Now, you, these are also, besides being right here, that slope and intercept is also given over here. So see, here's the slope, and a lot of people call that B1, and algebra you call that M for slope, but here's your slope, and here's your y-intercept and clear across like that. And now, what does the uh, slope mean? Well, the slope is rise over run, and in this case, since it's negative, you're falling three units for each one that you run along the x-axis. So when you're running one along the x-axis on this problem, you're running one along the number of absences. So uh, for each absence, this is what this slope means here. For each absence that you have along the x-axis, for each absence, your grade is decreasing, because this is negative, by about four points, you know, about 3.9 points. So uh, for each absence, your grade is going down by 3.9 points on that test, and that's what the slope means. If it was positive, it would be for each absence, your grade is going up by 3.9 points, but it's negative, so it's going down. Your y-intercept is a spot. It's the point where this graph would have hit this y-axis, and it would have been right here at 105.67. Uh, now, what does it mean? It means if you would have had, what, no absences, your score on that test would have been 105.67. Now maybe it's impossible to get 105.67 on the test, but this equation doesn't know that, so it just it just keeps on drawing. You know, it's just going to go in a straight line. It doesn't know that you can't get above 100. Or maybe if you extended this line farther out here, it would tell you that if you had like 30 absences, or I don't know how many, you might have a score of negative 10 on the test. Well. That's the impossible, so there's a certain range in which this line makes sense, and, uh, um, and that's what the slope and the y-intercept mean on this type of problem. Uh, I'll see if we can do another one here. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the regression line for that other data uh, that we had for, for section 9.1, and that was the shoe size and reading ability. Let me get that data and do the same thing. Copy. Went to the data sheet and copied it, and let's go to the red core sheet and uh, put that data back in and watch whenever you're putting data in make sure you get rid of any extra data like when I put this data in I had extra values down here from previous data that I had to delete but uh, let me go ahead and paste special this data in and there's that data pasted in now and see automatically when you do that it gives you your slope and your y-intercept now this was about shoe size was your x and reading ability was your y. So your slope is 8.97. Let's just round that for 9 a second. And it's over 1. This is the same as 8.97 over 1. The 1 is your run. And you're running along the x axis, and that's shoe size. And this means as your shoe size increases by 1, 
each unit that your shoe size goes up, your reading ability goes up by 8.97 points, or about 9 points. This is your y-intercept here, and that's where this line would have intersected this axis here. It would have hit at negative 1. And the y-intercept doesn't make sense, but it actually tells you that if your shoe size was 0, okay, if you had a shoe size of 0, your reading ability would be at negative 1.102. So that doesn't make sense for a couple reasons. But uh, that's just showing you the difference from, you know, what these slope and y-intercept mean. And again, this is your regression line or line of best fit, and that's automatically calculated for you. So we'll go on to section 9.3. These are some short sections here.